Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today I'm going to show you why the AK-12 Tarkov's newest 545 rifle falls short despite looking pretty decent at face value. To start with the basics, it can be bought from Prapol 4 for 73k and bartered at Prapol 3 for more than this, but sometimes you'll find it cheaper on the flea market. There is a brand new barter with the patch that just came in today, but I'm not sure what the item is yet because it's quest locked. From the looks of it, given the game price estimate is 181k, I imagine it's probably not worth it, even though it looks pretty kitted. So the standard AK-12 begins life at 57 ergonomics and 55 recoil, which is alright, and its unique feature is the 700 RPM fire rate. This is 50 faster than most of the regular 505 AKs that shoot 650, so in theory the AK-12's time to kill is slightly quicker. However, once we get into the modding, it becomes apparent pretty quickly that there isn't a great deal that we can do with this weapon. Probably the most disappointing part of the AK-12 is the muzzle devices. You can only use the standard compensator or the specific suppressor, however, unlike most others in the game, this suppressor is only fractionally better than the basic default comp for recoil, getting us to 52 instead, but at a hefty ergo price. It's also locked to Prapol 4 as well, meaning that you'll probably need to pay up from the flea market if you're not there yet, but at this trader level, you probably have better things to buy than this one. On the plus side though, you don't feel like you're screwing yourself over by going unsuppressed so much if you're fighting only in close quarters and want both the improved ergonomics and a cheaper build. There's only the default handguard and the top railed cover, so no choices there at all, and for the stock, because it's a buffer tube style AK, we don't get the benefits that fixed stock weapons do like those with the Zhukov. Even putting all of the recoil reducing attachments on it only comes to 44 recoil, which is fine, but one of the funny things about this type of stock arrangement is that the regular AK-74M folding stock with a butt pad on it is only slightly worse than the meta configuration at a fraction of the price. The standard tube with an MOE carbine and pad with an SE5 gets us to 49 ergonomics and 47 recoil, and swapping this over gets you to 46 ergonomics and 47 recoil instead using the butt pad version, which costs 6k. This doesn't even account for the fact that you can just sell the standard tube and stock, which ends up making the upgrade nearly free. All in all, the AK-12 ends up being pretty expensive for some fairly average stats, but as we know in Tarkov, numbers are not everything, so how does it hold up practically? Let's start by comparing the AK-12 to the AKS-74UB as the best-in-class comparison. Here we're using an unsuppressed budget version of the AK-12 with 51 recoil, and in terms of recentering time, these weapons are pretty much the same. It's close enough that they look identical at least for practical purposes, but the differences become much more obvious when we move on to full auto. For both of these tests, I purposefully compared to a UB with 51 recoil as well, the same as our AK-12. Recoil is not always comparable in Tarkov across weapons, but typically this deviation is primarily on full auto due to the differences in PMC auto compensation for different guns and the fire rate which has a massive impact on the perceived recoil of a spray. Because the recoil number tells us the jump of a single individual shot, this is why they both look the same on semi-auto mode. But on full auto we start to see the difference in fire rate appearing in the heightening of the AK-12 spray pattern versus the UB. What makes this even worse though is that to create a 74 UB with similar recoil we had to make a number of downgrades, moving the compensator to the R RRD allows the 74UB to dramatically beat the AK-12 on overall recoil, and in theory you can build a UB all the way down to the low 30s, which is miles better than anything the AK-12 can achieve. What's more is that typically the UB is a good kilogram lighter than the AK-12 as well, providing better arm stamina and ergo benefits along with just simply being shorter which is better for CQB. The only saving graces for the AK-12 are firstly as we said originally the 700 RPM, which is not matched by any other AK, but this ends up coming back to bite it with worse recoil overall. This is also mostly only beneficial in close combat, and for close range fighting, there are a ton of other weapons that outperform the AK-12 in terms of recoil, fire rate, and ammunition. Secondly, there is a very fringe benefit of better accuracy at 1.6 MOA, slightly better than the other full length AKs, and about twice as good as the UB to be fair. However again, we're typically not sniping with these guns, in part because of the low damage of the bullets in 545, so it's an unusual use case for this particular rifle. It may be seen as a little bit unfair to compare this only to the UB, which is seen as the best 545 AK right now in the game, so I also quickly put together a cheap AK-74N build from level 3 traders. RRD muzzle, the Krebs handguard, and an RVG foregrip with a butt pad and a bastion rail which already comes out to 44 vertical recoil, and with a lower RPM it is more controllable than our budget AK-12, again because of the fire rate and the outright recoil statistics. Overall, at least to me, the trade-offs made on price and recoil to gain some small amount of fire rate just doesn't justify picking picking up this gun unless there are some tweaks made to improve its handling, but clearly you can still use this weapon for fun and it will take down players with the right ammo. So finally we'll take a look at some gameplay to see how it performed in action. Okay, 
Big boy mode. Where are we? Of course, we're in here. Not be bad if we get the dreaded... Dreaded ABT. Interesting. Always makes me slightly nervous. There's no spawn fight. I'm just trying to check all of the little rat spots, you know? That's scav? That's scav, I think. Off we go. Yeah, boy. You know, it takes a lot of doing getting the armor half. It really does. Oh, what's this guy got on him? UMP. Ooh, he's high level. She actually does really care for him, but like, the reality is like actually horrendous. That one. So, yeah, I mean, it was like, it's, it's pretty... Oh dear. It almost feels like Gav or something. I didn't bring an aid. Hmm. I don't really want to right hand peek him. I feel like I'm almost better off, like... Where'd he go? I wish I had a nade. He's laid down. Big trooper. Okay. Next, go and check out my video on the best level 3 weapons, starting at level 22 with Jaeger. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids.